was just working on this by myself and then I figured I some people might want to see or hear how I'm actually doing this in more real time because I'm recording this for the purpose of a time lapse but I know that um that can be a bit fast for some people but so down here just talk to you a little bit about texture so everyone who most people who think of frogs think of frogs as being like they might think slimy or wet or whatever well they are wet they do need to have moisture in their skin to assist in their breathing but a lot of frogs certainly don't have smooth skin as in like you know really super smooth they're textured a lot of them are textured you'll have elements like up here where it's quite smooth but down here you're gonna have wrinkles you're gonna have bumps you're gonna have all sorts of little details um, that you want to come through in your drawing if you're aiming for that I mean obviously if you're aiming for a more impressionistic kind of style or a rough realism then that's totally fine that's what you're aiming for but if you wanted to capture all of these wrinkles and bumps and things um, this might I'm hoping help you a little bit so what I'm doing is I've done the base layers of color in here and now what I'm doing is I'm picking different colors to go over the top so let's look at his middle toes here so I've done like a mixture of different yellows and now I'm going to go in with a raw umber which is a few shades darker and I'm honestly just doing little squiggles I'm using moderate pressure it depends how light it is like over here where it's a bit lighter I don't need to go so too dark it's just very subtle the human brain is very good at picking up those type of tones most of the time you don't need to be obvious I don't need to draw really dark lines for the the viewer to pick up that there is texture there so I'm just going over it. and then I'm um, because my brain is all over the place if I notice little things like here I can see his toes not as sharp as I like I'm going to go through with the blue which is the color I use for the background I'm just sharpening the edges up a little bit and then blending out into the background so that line's a bit more neater but yeah going back in with my raw umbra and I'm doing little squiggles so he's just got little wrinkles very thin folds his foot, if you were to hold him, would feel very soft and maybe wet. Not certainly not slimy. Okay, but wet because you you should be if you ever handle a frog, you're supposed you should be wetting your hands and dip your hands in some water because you don't want to dry their skin out. It can actually be very bad for them. But yeah, his feet would feel very soft with this little texture. Now up here where it's a bit light, I'm going in with a green, a little, just a, one or two shades lighter. And I'm doing a combination of squiggles and little circles. The little circles are for the more bumpy bits. And then I can go over with, say, a white and blur them a bit more. And I'm just layering this up. I'm just doing this one little piece at a time. So down here, more squiggles on the edge of his toe. And I'm just going in this passion up, down, up, down, up, down. Sorry, this pattern. So like kind of like a figure eight motion up and down. Up, down, up, down, little squiggles. Okay, edge of his toe there. But yeah. And when you do little details like this, that can also help you if you've made a mistake or whatever, because you can just turn that mistake into detail and texture like over here for instance when I was drawing the black over here I accidentally broke I pressed a bit too hard I broke the tip of the black um, ivory black derwent drawing pencil which is a very opaque dark black and I because it hit the paper pretty hard I wasn't able to lift it off that well and just here that little line you can see is what's left over of that pigment that I accidentally hit the paper too hard with I managed to lift it off decently but you could still see the line and so that's now become a crease I've gotten the raw umber and I just drew this little circle around the edge of his toe here because they do have it they've got like a line here I just made it come in further in real life it would be a little bit it would be a few millimeters closer to the edge of his toe but you don't really notice it well, I'd like to think you don't really notice it you can see it's a bit straighter here it's not as curved but it's what I think is decent camouflage for a mistake that actually um, can't really be fixed any other way because the option is either you try to camouflage it if like assuming you've tried to lift the pigment off and it hasn't worked 100% your options are there then to either camouflage it like I've done or you literally just start again and I wasn't keen on starting again if I can help it okay so now I've drawn all these little circles down here with the mountain green and now what I'm going to do is go over with the lighter green again and I'm going to blend in the top layer here just so that those circles are not as obvious 
Come back in with the mountain green again. Instead of doing circles now, I'm going to do little dots because as the light hits this part, it's going to be less um, obvious, less than not as round. And then I come in again with a different, so this green is only maybe two, maybe one or two tones darker than the base layer, whereas down here it's quite a bit, it's substantially darker. Okay, now black. I'm only going to use the black in some areas and just to highlight a little bit of darkness shadow. So down here, a little bit of black. You don't want to go overboard with black because then the contrast will be too dark. You only really want to go in with black where you want there to be a strong contrast. Because when you do contrast well, that's what aids in something looking realistic, even if it's like more of an impressionistic kind of style. You'll notice that even people who do more impressionist pieces, when there's good contrast, they don't. it, it sort of really does assist in it because your brain fills in the blanks. We, the same thing with colours. You don't need to match. If you're copying off a reference or still life or whatever, um, you don't need to match the colors a hundred percent like if I got an eyedropper tool like you know pretend I could do that in the real world and drop the eyedropper tool on this picture it would not match up with my reference because you know it's not I haven't aimed to a hundred percent match it up so the colors are a little bit different like in the reference I've drawn his foot a little bit more of an orangey brownie kind of yellow whereas in the reference it's almost like a neon yellow same with here I've drawn it a bit more um Kind of the green is, you know, I like this green, but in the reference photo, it's literally like a neon green. It's a really in your face kind of a green. But for me, I've sort of dulled it down a little bit. I've added um, more cream to it to kind of tone it down just a little bit. I've also added actually more contrast up here. The lighting's a bit different. So it's just little things. You put your own little artistic touch on it. Um, and that's the whole point. It's art. I mean, unless your purpose is to do a complete carbon copy photorealism, which is I know some people do aim for that, and that's totally fine. It's no different than if someone aims to just get an impressionistic kind of uh, view of something. It's completely what you are choosing to do as an artist. So you can put your own spin on it. You can change the lighting a little bit. You can change colors a little bit. Um, I'm certainly not copying where all of the textures are. I'm just drawing random little circles literally random, like just in this general area, I am not going to be drawing them exactly where they show up. Same with hair. If I'm drawing an animal with hair, it doesn't matter if it's scales, hair, skin texture, whatever, I am not sitting there and <laughs> marking out exactly where every single hair is. It's just not worth it. Um, for me, at least, like I, I just can't do it. I mean, these, these pieces already take a significant amount of time as it is. Um, but yeah, I was also at one point planning to talk about how I do the tree um, bit. I still might do it, it depends, but um, I think I can t just chat about it in this video as well because we're talking about texture and how to achieve it. I pretty much do it the same way you're seeing me do the frog's leg here. So this particular tree branch that Mr. Frog's sitting on is very lumpy and textured. And so what I'll be doing is it's going to have a it's got a bright light shining on it, which means the contrast is going to be very um, obvious. So what that means is up here there's more color, more browns and more reds. Down here because the light's hitting it directly, it's going to have less color. There's going to be a bit of color here where the shadow is because um, shadows tend to show up color a bit better in this type of thing whereas overexposure will dull the color so what that means is I'll be doing a base layer of blue believe it or not blues I'll be putting blues and grays like a cold grays in as the base layer with a touch of brown like a little bit of Van Dyke brown and that'll be my base layer I'll blend that a little bit but not a heap because I don't want to remove the tooth of the paper and then once that's done I'm going to do little circles like what you see me doing right now but those circles will be done maybe four shades darker. So about the same contrast you're seeing me here where it's a darker green. And then once that's done, I'll be coming in with a black, an actual black, a dark black, and just doing little squiggle dots. There's my computer telling me something. Um, but yeah, and it's I'm not actually going to blend the top layer. The top layer I'm going to keep rough. Same as up here, I, I kept it rough. I didn't actually blend the top layer. I just did little squiggles and dots and things because I wanted that crispness that comes when you put the black directly on top. 
and I'm not going to be using a polychromo for that. I'll be using something like a Derwent drawing. If you've got Prismacolor, that also works well. Um, luminance, basically you want it to be an opaque black that sits well on top of other layers. Some pencils like polychromos, um, they layer very well when you're layering lightly, but they don't layer very well on top of pre-burnished work or work that have already got a decent saturation. Um, so it just comes with a bit of practice. You'll sort of get what I mean. If you've been doing this a while or eventually when you get a bit of practice, um, you'll sort of see what I mean when I'm saying that. You can feel when the paper can't really take much more detail. Um, it's the same thing I explain to clients. Um, there will be a, a certain point when I'm showing them updates that I'll explain um, that, that if they want any changes, it basically can't happen at a certain point. There will be a point that I can't add any more detail because it will just, the, there's no more tooth. <laughs> um, it's, it's already saturated and it, it can either not physically take anymore or eventually it'll start to honestly just look muddy and just bad <laughs> and you don't want that. Okay, so while I've been talking, I've just been adding in these details up here. I've been doing the circles. I only did it for maybe two or three rows. And now I'm just going to do light little half circles in the same darker green, this mountain green, but do it light fast. I'm going to swap pencils now to a polychromo, which is more translucent. Actually, that's that was what I was talking about. That's actually too translucent. So I'll just show what I mean. I tried to draw just then and I can't see it. I literally cannot see it. Polychromos do not do well when you try to layer like this over many layers, whereas these ones do. Um, let's try it. This is still a polychromo. I'll try it in the lighter where I haven't layered it as much. So up here I can still see it. It's not too bad because I haven't layered it as much. The more I work down where it's down here, I can't really see it anymore. It's not going to work. Okay. So I'll just keep working on it. I'm going to get that green, burnish just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm just going to go a little bit over only this side here. To kind of blur it a little bit, but over here I don't want to blur it. I want to keep it nice and crisp. Okay, I'm losing a little bit of that yellow. So what I do is I come in now with a bit of yellow um, over the top. So this is Illuminance 520. So what is this? Medium cadmium yellow. Yep. Medium cadmium yellow, just add a little bit more yellow to that green. And again, because of the type of pencil this is actually showing up when I put it over it, this won't work as a, if I tried this with a polychroma, it wouldn't work. Having said that, I do love polychromas, that's why I use them. But different pencils have different properties which allow for different uses and techniques. Um, if I only had polychromos, I'd have to be a little bit more careful with when I'm layering certain things up. Because like I said, you wouldn't be able to put certain things on top. Now here, I'm just going to darken this up a little bit with the green. Very fine line. And I'm just doing, kind of making this go into the creases of these skin folds. Just double checking the reference again. There's a little bit more here. So my brain, I kind of jump around. I'm like, I was up here, but then I was looking down here and thinking, oh, I'm missing just darkening. Very subtle. So when you do lines, doesn't matter what animal it is, if it's or a person even, um, you don't always need the strong contrast. I'm coming in with a black and I'm just putting that as a little crease. Tiny, tiny little crease line. You don't want to go crazy with super dark black lines showing these creases because they just don't, they, you run the risk of it looking cartoony to be honest. Like I said, sometimes you just need it to be a couple of tones darker and that's all you need. You don't need anything else to try and work on that. But yeah, I think that's coming along well. All right, I'm going to keep working on this. Um, yeah, the more I work on it, eventually, like I said, there is going to be a, a video, assuming I don't lose the, <laughs> the video files, um, but there will be a video which I plan to release of the whole process from the start to the finish of this guy. Um, it's mostly going to be a time lapse. There are separate videos like this one where I'm talking slowly and showing you in real time, or I've just edited it in real time to show you. Just simply because everyone's got their own way that they learn. Um, some people learn better from watching a time lapse start to finish, and other people prefer to just watch me in real time like I am now and talking about what I'm doing. So yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. If you do want to ask any questions, feel free to. Um, I, try, I try to get there where I can, but I'm not always quick on social media. Um, it depends what I'm doing. 
But yeah, if you do want to ask any questions, ask away. Anyone who's asking um, about live tutorials, like any more live tutorials, um, they are on the horizon. But at the time that I'm posting this video, I'm still, I still have a young baby, which means things can be a bit unpredictable when it comes to knowing in advance when I can do a recording, um, which isn't very fair to people if I book a time in to do it and then I have to keep cancelling especially if people have set time aside to do it so that's not really fair on you guys so for the moment at the time of making this video um, we're just going to have things pre-recorded like this so when I get a period like this like the baby's asleep and I know that I've got time to sit down and talk and explain what I'm doing we can do it but I don't feel bad at having to cancel a live tutorial just because someone's in a grumpy mood and needs me to be with her but yeah, so tutorials are on the horizon. Live tutorials are on the horizon. I've got a few photos lined up with consent to use for that, which is fantastic. So I'll be talking through how to do those. It'll run, they'll run similar to the green mamba that some of you have done with me already. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. But yeah, enjoy. Thank you.